thought it was about time after replacing my cutters for the fourth time to do a revisit of the Gerber center drive. I was, you know, slightly critical of it in my uh, four multi-tools video uh, recently, but this is by no means a bad tool. It just has a couple of things you need to know about it, but overall still recommended. So let's talk about the Gerber center drive in the shed. Gerber is a weird company, right? For every good thing that comes out of the Portland factory, like this, uh, the strong arm, right? It's a good knife. Uh, the center drive, as I'm about to tell you, it's a good multi tool, you know? Uh, for every couple of things like this you get with the Gerber brand on them that the, the Portland factory makes, some like smooth brained plonk, this is how I imagine it must happen, some complete goose at like central corporate. <laughs> signs off on like shit like this having the Gerber name on it, or, or like this, the stakeout and the whatever the shit this was, where nothing even works on it and they're so badly made and the steels are like one CR1 MOP. Like, you know, I, I don't get it. They're like Jekyll and Hyde. They get this sort of stuff going. You're like, oh yeah, Gerber are back, man. They're on a roll. And then, no, and here's some, di here's like 10 diarrheaed out items that kind of even look the same, but are just so much lower quality. Anyway, mini rant over. Let's talk about the center drive. So the Gerber center drive. I really like this tool. I know I sort of, I bag the cutters. I do, I bag the cutters because they've broken on me a few times. And I maintain that if Gerber calls them wire cutters, which they do, and shows them in their demo videos cutting wire, which they do, hell, even in one of their videos, they show it cutting the Leatherman's micro bit driver. To fix just about anything. Which is harder than most wire. I just maintain that they have a certain point in them, the tungsten gradually accumulates some sort of, or maybe it's just the luck of the draw per cut. But I think there's like a one in 500 times, every time you cut wire with these, that they're gonna shatter. So that across the life of the tool with me and the amount of wire work I do on my fence, yeah, I've had them fail three times on this one, so I've replaced them. This is my fourth set. And yeah, I'm just using them on normal wire. Uh, I'll show you. So this is the exact wire that I broke my last bit of um, center drive cutters on. It's the wire twitch to hold this gate open so these poo brains can get in there and eat their dinner. Yes, yes, yes. Ah! And as you see, like, Alan, fuck off, mate. As you see, it's like not the thickest stuff in the world and generally it does cut and it sort of fits into a little cutting groove. Thing. It's just every so often doing that task, some reason, and it's been, this is the fourth set now, so it's been three times, sometimes they just fucking explode. And I don't know what rhyme or reason there is to it, but that's what happens. So yeah, that's my main criti critique of the center drive, but the rest of it is a pretty well-designed, pretty cool tool. Let's look at it against some other multi-tools uh, for some size comparison. That's the Gerber center drive, and that's the Leatherman Wave. So you see the Wave is a lot more of a neat sort of compact tool with about the same amount of capability uh, as the center drive. The center drive just has more negative space in it, and it needs that because of this uh, on-rails plier system. That just needs sort of empty areas for them to move through to be able to form the rails at the back of the pliers right on and all that sort of thing. Look, all of these are pretty space efficient though. I mean, people carry pocket knives that are, are this big routinely. That's a single tool. That's a one piece, you know, that's a one tool, multi-tool, right? And that's as big as the center drive in almost, you know, all three dimensions apart from width. Hey, the paramilitary tool, apart from the weight, really forms a pretty similar pocket footprint to the center drive. So whilst this is a somewhat bulkier multi-tool, uh, especially when you compare it to like a stall like the Wave or the, the Spirit, uh, it's still very sort of space efficient for the tools that you're getting in here. Uh, let's go down the tools and do a tool review. First up is the plain blade liner locking knife. It's a pretty big knife. It's bigger than all the other multi-tools knives. Gerber quite proudly uh, says it's about the same length of blade as my Spyderco Endella. So, you know, a, a 
definitely a cut above in terms of size. In terms of the steel, it's still just a basic 420 series style stainless steel. So of course the, uh, the Leatherman Charge, I guess, is gonna have a, a better knife blade than it because it's got 154 cm. That edge is gonna last a whole lot longer than this edge here. But you know what, for what multi-tool blades are, it actually does a fine job. Multi-tool blades to me are like the spare knife that you are sort of happier to put into the dirt or cut cardboard against concrete or all those silly things that you use a knife for in a pinch. Next up is the center axis driver arm, which has a you know universal bit with a little magnet in there that sort of uh, retains it so you can sort of uh, use it upside down without it falling out. Uh, this is kind of the main trick of the center drive. And yeah, for multi-tool screwdrivers, it's definitely probably the best one. Uh, you know, they're right. It does make an easier turn having it come through the center of the tool. Uh, SOG does a pretty decent one. Uh, you can use this uh, side bit driver here. The SOG has you know, slightly more cumbersome uh, tool selection. It'll sort of clump out. This one's got a exchangeable bit too, which sort of goes onto a, a series of, of bits that come in the sheath. Uh, probably the second best, I think I ruled it second best in my comparison multi-tool video, but the Gerber's really is the best. You can get all of your bits from like your, your um, well, I've got this kit here from, from DeWalt and all these bits here, these impact bits will fit it, you know. There's a lot of versatility in the center drives bits, uh, bit set and uh, bit driver. So I do really appreciate that and it locks as well. So it won't sort of wonk shut on you. The other external tool is obviously the flip openable pliers. So you get some needle nose portions which have good contact, then you get the uh, knurled section in the middle for turning nuts and bolts, and then of course you do get your uh, hellish devilish tungsten carbide cutters which I've said enough about and you know what to be honest if all you're cutting with them is like super thin electrical wire then hey use with confidence. All I say is my, me, my example, my fencing wire Three of them have busted and I'm on my fourth. And goodness me, I won't go on about it anymore because I'm feeling like a broken record. Moving inside the handle there. So you've got the file. Do you ever use the file on your multi-tool? Uh, this one at first when you get it doesn't feel so good, but I've soaked this one a few times in vinegar and in WD-40, and eventually it sort of thins out this oxide coating on it. When you first get it, you'll rub your finger against it and it'll come off a bit black, uh, but eventually that stuff does wear off and you get a pretty decent little file. You can file like, you know, nail heads down if you've got uh, the lizard's aquarium thing. I uh, had some nails on a little ramp that I made for them and I filed them down with this uh, file and it did just fine. So when I'm looking for a use for the file, it's there, but generally speaking, the multi-tool file is always something I'd probably just would rather be without, exchange it with a pair of scissors or with a saw or something like that. All these tools do, of course, lock using this sliding lock there. So that is nice. Uh, moving on from there, we're gonna get out the awl. So you see the awl there, little spiky awl. That is a pretty vicious little awl and that definitely punches holes in anything I've ever needed to punch a hole in with it. Uh, it's still very sharp. It doesn't really have, you know, it's got a slight kind of blade on the edge there. It's fine at everything else, but just for making piercing holes, absolutely great. Uh, some awls do have kind of a scraping blade feature as well. And this one's sort of a bit fragile for that, but certainly an awl that I rate more than I, you know, I wouldn't be without it. I wouldn't really get it off the, the multi-tool if I, if I had a choice, I'd probably leave it there. Uh, next up is a tool that I really like. I love this little uh, pry bar. I think a pry is a pretty essential little multi-tool thing to have. And this is something in daily life you use a whole bunch. Well, I use a whole bunch. I'm always prying something, digging out in something and scraping on something. And this is generally like an all-purpose little angled bit of steel that you can use for most things. So I really like this pry and it also doubles as a bottle opener for if you're somewhere without twist tops and you want to have a brew. So pretty cool. Again, it locks so your, your uh, prying isn't going to go awry on you. And then lastly is a serrated edged blade. So there we are, pull it up from the nail nick there. The serrated blade, a little bit awkward there. You know, you, you're holding it like this. You've got this kind of negative area under there. So it kind of all gets in the way a little bit. Unless you're holding up to cut things like you want to do a, like a hold up rope cut like so, you know. Then it's fine for that, I guess. Like, you know, you want to do your cutting like that, you know, cut your rope, whoa, <laughs> away from yourself like that. And that's fine for that. But um, yeah, in general, I think I do prefer, there's a, there's a, a Gerber 
a center drive plus and they get rid of this they put a pair of scissors here and then on the blade they just half serrate it and i'm all for that i think that's a really good idea so maybe the center drive plus is for you if you have the same sentiment towards the blade placement and whatnot as i have so there you go quite like the center drive not a uh, you know I, I only bag it because of those cutters really if it wasn't for the cutters it would be highly highly recommended but even still i recommend this tool it's sold for a pretty good price. It's much cheaper than most Leathermans. Uh, for the equivalent Leatherman, which I would probably argue would be the either the Wave or maybe the one-handed tool, although I think that's off the market now, you're gonna pay a whole lot more than for the, uh, the center drive. So the one-handed tool has a similar plier style, but that has really short, stumpy tools on it. The Wave has about a comparable tool set, I suppose. Um, you're gonna pay a lot more for those, and they're both sort of US made. Uh, I think this is still a really kind of clever buy, uh, and it's pretty well designed, pretty well laid out. Look, I had some comments in my other video about how multi-tools are dumb and they're for people who can't be bothered or don't know how to use proper tools. And I mean, apart from the air of like high horsiness and the general chodiness of the comment, I kind of get the sentiment. I, I understand that, yeah, a multi-tool is never going to be as good as a pair of pliers or as a screwdriver or as a fixed blade or a pocket knife even. The steels and the materials and the construction aren't going to be as good and it's always a compromise, but very small amount of real estate, probably even in your pocket, uh, to fit all those things. Unless you're going to be one of those guys who carries around a pair of Knipex pliers and a little bun bag with a bit driver kit in it. Like, I mean, maybe you are that guy who actually uses the Knipex he carries for things apart from Instagram and that you carry Knipex pliers. Side tangent maybe to be had. Um, unless you're that guy that literally does carry a mini toolbox around on you. A multi-tool is about the best way of having like a half decent tool set on you for unplanned needs, or for like mobile needs. Like I'll use them in my garden all the time because my other alternative is lugging around my Yeti box full of tools, which I mean, I will do if I'm spending a full day or I'm spending even a full couple of hours. But if I go for a walk around, pat the dogs, see the chickens and see a few things that they're doing on the way, multi-tool all the way, my friends, all the way. So whilst they'll never replace those tools, they'll certainly substitute for them in a pinch. And by being like overtly against that fact, I really feel like you might be missing out. I think a lot of people have been let down by multi-tools in the past. Most people's first multi-tool experience is like a wave imitation from like a big box store that says like, you know, like a brand like, you know, DeWalt or King Chrome on the side of it. And it does suck. And it's got a visit, you know, the ones they've got like a visible spring between here in the middle and they're just pieces of shit. And I think that often puts people off, but there really is something to the dedicated knife or multi-tool companies, multi-tools. And the Gerber Center Drive is a really decent way to start. And I think it's the best Gerber multi-tool. I like it more than the MP600. The only things I knock about it, apart from the aforementioned cutters, are that I don't love having to open up the tool and dig out these handle tools here. I would like for them to just open out from here some way, but you can't have everything. And that's also the mantra of the multi-tool. They can do most things, but you can't have everything. And that's capable. It's, it's, it's capable, but it's not going to be, you know, exquisite for doing all your jobs. So but anyway, Gerber Center Drive. I would definitely give this thing about a seven out of 10, which is above average. It's definitely good. It's in the good to great zone for sure. I mean, the Leatherman uh, wave, that's probably a 9 out of 10, you know. I don't think any multi-tool is ever going to be a 10 unless you let me build and design it myself and let me put MagnaCut in the blade seal and let me put, like, you know, universal bits in the drivers and, and then the multi-tool is probably going to be this big, so it's not going to be a 10 for hugeness reasons. Anyway, talk all day. Talk to the cows come home at multi-tools. I feel like the video is probably long enough. Hope you've enjoyed the revisit of the Gerber Center Drive and I'll see you all in the next film. Goodbye. Never work with children or animals, always upstage you.